Good afternoon, and thank you so much. Uh, what a lovely day uh, for uh, an important tribute to some uh, American heroes who uh, perhaps haven't gotten all the recognition that they're due. Special greetings to uh, the members on the podium with me, uh, and in particular to the folks that have participated in the ceremony thus far. It's a beautiful day, but it's a tough day to carry the colors because the wind is blowing and uh, it would be a lot easier if you were all still 19. <laughs> I want to thank everyone in the audience for being here today. Um, thanks to the people in the community for your hard work and devotion to our nation's history and our fallen heroes and for bringing this moving wall to uh, Clinton. You know, I've come uh, all the way from Rock Island to give what I hope is a relatively short speech um, in which I hope to express the gratitude of a grateful nation and the United States Army for the sacrifice of the fallen of all our wars and the tremendous loss and sacrifice of their families and loved ones. At this time of what has become another long war, we've learned once again that when a serviceman goes off to war, many others sacrifice and serve as well, to include families and loved ones. For those of you who are here today who have done that, thank you. Today we will shine a light of service on another generation, and rightfully so. Later in this ceremony, the names of those from Clinton County and neighboring counties who were lost in Vietnam and whose names are written on the moving wall will be read aloud. I wonder if it wouldn't be more appropriate for me to stop right here and simply let the names speak for themselves. After all, what could I say that would add to this sad roll call? And what could I do that could quantify the depth of their sacrifice? But since I was asked to come and speak for a few minutes, I hope I find a way to honor them with my words. I imagine that some of you, like me, have seen firsthand the random permanence of death delivered so swiftly, swiftly by the terrible sword of battle. It is possible that someone here held someone listed right over there while they breathed their last breath and made a promise that they would never forget. And you've come here today to realize Our nation fulfilled that promise and our own sacred national duty as well by etching those names in stone. The wall in Washington, dedicated in November 1983, reminded us then, and this moving wall reminds us again today, that regardless of the time, our national mood, or the perceived necessity of the conflict, the sacrifice of our men and women in uniform is both ultimate and permanent. And when you look at their names and see yourself reflected in that stone, it reminds us all that the sacrifice was made for us, that in our great government of the people, by the people, and for the people, that responsibility for those names belongs in part to all of us. So it's good and fitting that we pause and reflect on their sacrifice and that we take advantage of the opportunity offered by this wall. And how nice that it comes to us and we can once again think about them. This moving wall is a gift to many who will never make it to Washington, but have sacrificed so much through their association to one of those names. For many, these names are nothing more than letters etched in stone. To some, this honor roll is just a historical record, a chron chronological listing of the names of the Vietnam fallen, and in total, a demonstration of the toll taken by our nation, over 58,000. Yet to some, and perhaps some here today, those etched letters mean so much more than just the name. They reflect a life. Each name reflects a thousand memories, both happy and sad. To be sure to those left behind, these names are a reminder 
of an ocean of tears, and in their reflection, they see in their own life, they see their own life redirected, families broken, faith shaken, dreams disrupted, and promises unfulfilled. There is nothing we can say that can add to the sacrifice made by those who died on our behalf, fighting for our freedom. All we can do is humbly and prayerfully thank them and vow that we will never forget them, nor forget what they did for us. I want to read to you a letter written in an earlier conflict by a soldier named Sullivan Ballou. He wrote, July 14, 1861, Camp Clark, Washington. My very dear Sarah, the indications are strong that we may move in a few days, perhaps tomorrow. Lest I should not be able to write again, I feel impelled to write a few lines that may fall under your eye when I shall be no more. I have no misgivings about or lack of confidence in the cause in which I'm engaged, and my courage does not halt or falter. I know how strongly American civilization now leans on the triumph of the government and how great a debt we owe to those who went before us through the blood and sufferings of the revolution. And I am willing, perfectly willing, to lay down all my joys in life to help maintain this government and to pay that debt. Sarah, my love for you is deathless. It seems to bind me with mighty cables that nothing but omnipotence could break. And yet my love of country comes over me like a strong wind and bears me unresistibly on with all these chains to the battlefield. The memories of the blissful moments I have spent with you come creeping over me and I feel most gratified to God and to you that I have enjoyed them for so long. And hard as it is for me to give them up and burn to ashes the hopes of a future of future years when God willing we might still have lived and loved together and seen our sons grown up to honorable manhood around us. I have, I know, but few and small claims upon divine providence, but something whispers to me. Perhaps it is the wafted prayer of my little Edgar that I shall return to my loved ones unharmed. If I do not, my dear Sarah, never forget how much I love you and when my last breath escapes me on the battlefield, it will whisper your name. Forgive my many faults and the many pains I have caused you, how thoughtless and foolish I have oftentimes been. How gladly would I wash out my tears, every little spot, upon your happiness. But oh, Sarah, if the dead can come back to this earth and flit unseen around those they love, I shall always be near you in the gladdest days and in the darkest nights. Always, always. And if there be a soft breeze upon your cheek, it shall be my breath. As the cool air fans your throbbing temple, it shall be my spirit passing by. Sarah, do not mourn me dead. Think I am gone and wait for thee, for we shall meet again. Sullivan Ballou was killed a week later at the first Battle of Bull Run on July 21st, 1861, with that letter in his pocket. And you know there are more than a million names on America's honor roll, representing all those who died in service to our nation. Each, like Sullivan, had lifetimes of dreams ahead. Each, like him, had someone like Sarah who spent the rest of their life wondering, what if?